It's another fan episode right here on Locked On Spurs, and fans are asking if they build it, they'll come. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs and the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kins 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hey, hey, it's Monday, the start of your work week. We're going to ease you into that right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, look, the countdown is on. The offseason is winding down. Training camp's right around the corner, so we just got to get through these last few weeks before uh, we can get into some real business regarding your silver and black. But hey, thanks for mis- making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. What are we talking about today? Well, the Spurs recently spoke with a Spurs sports journal, um, sports business journal, excuse me, and about the new training facility. And we'll have their quote in a bit. But basically, their premise is the Rock at La Cantera is akin to the saying, if you build it, they will come. We're going to get the fan perspective on that, as well as what our fans are thinking about Becky Hammond's success out in Las Vegas. And if the Spurs drop the ball uh, regarding, well, her future in the NBA and on the coaching staff, who is helping me out today. He is back, everybody. He's been busy. He's been traveling all over Texas. He is Eric Hicks. Eric, number four for you, right, on the episode of Lockdown Spurs? This is actually going to be number five. Number five. Look at you. You're a five-timer now. Yeah, thanks for having me on, by the way. Yeah, you're welcome. By the way, I, I might have to give you the number to um, Trading Cards Anonymous because you need help, buddy. Oh, really? Yeah, man. You yeah. you love collecting those trading cards, yeah. uh, basketball yeah. cards, NFL cards. Yeah, that's all. That's, me- that's kind of all that's up there to do right now in the DFW is just uh, rip <laughs> open some packs. Yeah, I, I showed you, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Well, well, before we dive into the meat of everything, you know, what what have you got any pulls? What, what has been your best pull so far since we last spoken? I haven't actually got a pull. I did get a good find. I think I showed it to you. It was a Keldon Johnson, a rookie orange. Um, yeah. Yeah. If, uh, if anybody else wants to see, I'll go ahead and post that after and uh, they could take a look at it. But that was pretty good one. His card's value has actually been dropping for some reason a little bit. Really? So that's making me... Uh, and I, I the Spurs fans, hey, uh, go out and grab you some Keldon Johnsons, especially the rookies. I mean, hey, they're going down a little bit in value. I don't know when and why, but you know what? I'm happy to pick them up. Yeah, this is where we need to get uh, Josh Cook on. That's yeah. why. Yeah, that'll be yeah. a good question for him. Yeah. 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 I'm interested in why Keldon is uh, basketball. You know, there you go. See, I'm going to get off on this tangent if I don't keep it on the straight and narrow. <laughs> hey. and yeah, I, I just I just want to know like why why is it de- de- devaluing? Hey that yeah. hobby gets you. That hobby gets you. That's how oh hobby. you're telling me my 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 thing is my vices are um action figures. I'm trying to wean off uh Funko Pops little by little. I used to, I have a big collection. I gotta reduce those and movies science like anime like those are my vices but yeah yeah, we're gonna nerd it up, aren't we? We keep this up, yeah, but let's yeah, go to yeah, dive. We can go yeah. on. For <laughs> yeah, we can go on forever on this one, but let's go to dive into things. So, you know, I talked about um, a recent interview that the Spurs did with the Sports Basketball Journal. Now, for those of y'all who do not live in San Antonio or are not aware, the Spurs are building a new training facility out in San Antonio. It's called the Rock at La Cantera. Now, it's a state of the art research or human performance research center on a 22 acre park it's as mentioned state of the art it has a public outdoor uh, event plaza space for medical and hospitality and commercial use but there is the new spurs practice gym within it now so construction is underway they're already broken ground you, you know the spurs a few of the spurs players uh eric went out there to check it out but phil cullen the Spurs Director of Basketball Operations and Innovation spoke with the Sports Business Journal on the importance of the new training facility. Now, Eric, you might be thinking, well, of course it's important. It's new. You know, they they need a new gym and, you know, it makes sense. But it's beyond that, Eric. They say that it's going to be a key in their hunt for players in NBA free agency. Now, Eric, before we get the fan take and your take, let me read you his quote. Again, this is from Phil Cullen with the Spurs. It's an arms race. 
let's just say the money's equal and the opportunities are equal as far as playing time. What's going to be that decision-making factor that is going to drive a player to San Antonio? We wanted to make sure we gave ourselves the best opportunity in that discussion. So basically, this is just field of dreams, Eric. The Spurs believe if they build it, they will come. But historically, no big name free agents have ever come to San Antonio unless LaMarcus Aldridge. What, let's start off with your thoughts, and then we'll get the fan thoughts. So what does Eric Hicks think about what the Spurs are seen as the key to a free agency. My thoughts on that. I, I think number one, that's just comical. All right. And that's just me. It, it, and I, you know what? I take that back. And I know that's not that just me. I, there has been plenty of other Spurs fans who have come out and they just laughed at that comment. Um, no, it does not. I mean, it does help. It's good to always have a good training facility, but that's not what's going to attract, attract, uh, big name free agents. Everybody knows that. Like, you know, come on, don't insult our intelligence. Um, I think I would rather, I would rather for them build an actual gym to attract free agents. When I say a gym, I mean like an arena or something like that, maybe put it downtown or something like that, but a practice facility to attract free agents. Come on, man, get real. That ain't going to happen. Um, yeah. I think it, yeah. it was, I think it was, oh, it, this is, this is in mind. I think it was, uh, it was a, it was, it was Jimenez who said, you know what, if you want to mm-hmm. ca- quit being called small market, mm-hmm. stop acting small market. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I thought that yeah. was a great point, and that hits the nail right on the head. And I, a training facility to protect fit? Come on, man. You know, like you said, the last one was LaMarcus Aldridge who came over. And if you ask me, you know, he came over for different reasons. And it was good reasons at that. But, mm-hmm. you know, there ain't going to, you know, a training facility. Come on. Yeah, I, I look at the situation the Spurs are, and I say, look, okay, you all think this is going to help? Fine. It's going to help, yes. It'll help. It'll change the it'll, – it, hopefully it'll change the, the history regarding NBA free agents coming to San Antonio. But I don't think it's going to be the answer to this. You know, we just talked about it right now. Keldon Johnson's value and trading card is going down. You know, obviously there's something there. The market is saying he's not it. Uh you know, he's not Zion. He's not Le- LeBron, not KD. Uh, you know, he's not a LeBron James. So, but I, I look at this situation the Spurs are in. Look, I'll take it. They got to start somewhere. If this is a stepping stone to becoming a free agent destination, so be it. Now, another reason why the Spurs are building this uh, training facility is that apparently it's a training facilities arms race in the league right now, Eric. Uh, the Magic CEO, Alex Martin, spoke to the uh, Sports Business Journal. He said that every NBA team is looking for the competitive advantage as possible. you got to stay current with the latest equipment. So, And the Spurs have been kind of ahead of the curve when it came to international scouting. They've done other uh, innov- innovative things. But at the end of the day, the end of the day, Eric, do you think it'll happen? Do you think this is going to be the end all be all reason those free agents come to San Antonio? Or though, if if you're a free agent, if Eric Hicks is a free agent and he sees and he's being courted by the Spurs and you go out there and you check out that facility, will Eric Hicks be like, okay, that's cool, or sign me up? I'm I'm coming to San Antonio. I would just be like, that's cool. You know what I mean? Um yeah. You see it. You see, like the the, di- the difference between big market teams and small market teams. You know, what I mean? yeah. at the end of the day, for the Spurs and for the NBA, you know, at the end of the day, it's all just a business. And for the players thinking that it's a business for themselves. I mean, like like LeBron, he, yeah. he went out to L.A. You know what I mean? But um, uh, uh, no, for a training facility, no. And you know, it's not a knock on. T- it's not a knock to the companies around the the city. I love all the companies that get involved, you know, with the commercials and stuff like that. But a lot of them, they can't compete with more of the big market cities. Yeah. Apparently the magic, uh, the uh, Hornets and the Suns are, are the other uh, three teams that are currently constructing brand new practice facilities, you know, and notice there's a common thread here. That Spurs rebuilding magic. Haven't been that good. Uh, so the only threat viable threat is probably the Suns. Because you know they're they're at the top of the mountain right now in the West in the NBA, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's it was an interesting article, and if you want to read it, it's at kens 5com slash Spurs. Before we transition to our next topic, Eric, uh, I didn't get the fa- the post of the fan base. What did the fans have to say once I uh, released that article regarding the training facility? 
Oh, they laughed just like I was. <laughs> that, that, that was it. Come on, man. Like, you know, and, 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 but it was one of those, I want to, I don't want to call it like a negative reaction, but it was a laughing like reaction. And you see it, and it was just, they were just like, come on. It was over. I could see that they're what they're this what the Spurs organization is trying to do, you know, they're trying to lift us up, but you know, ugh, come on, man, you don't have to go all there. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey, look, Eric, like I said, I'm gonna take it uh, for what it is. <laughs> if it helps out the Spurs get into free agent and change the fortunes, that's great. But look, think about this, everybody. Maybe they didn't have to because they had an all legendary generational player Tim Duncan, but you not even the Tim Duncan era did key free agents say, you know what? I want to go to San Antonio and win titles, and I'll take a pay cut in order to chase that title. That and that 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 just never happened. Even yeah. then, when they had the product on the court to really give a free a top free agent to come to San Antonio. Didn't happen. I mean, who knows, Eric? Maybe behind the scenes, we didn't know. Maybe they. You said, know what? We we, we saw we, it. Cha- we yeah. saw our, our training facility. Our training facility. We invented it. It was called load management. We started it. <laughs> that was a that, that was a training facility right there. All right. When we get back, we're going to continue our chat with Eric Hicks on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs, and we're going to get his thoughts and the fans' thought on the success Becky Hammond is having with Las Vegas and if the Spurs dropped the ball. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual total is closer to 200 plus. That's right. You could be wasting hundreds of dollars each month on subscriptions you don't even know about. Rocket Money. Yes, Rocket Money. You need to get that right now. There's an app. It's called Rocket Money. Go download it right now. Uh, I love using that. It takes care of of those subscriptions that you just want to get rid of for me it's called rocket money it was formerly called Truebill. now the app shows you all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want and you can even find it can even find subscriptions that you don't even know you're paying for you may even find out they've been double charged for a subscription to cancel a subscription all you have to do is press cancel and rocket money takes care of the rest cancel unnecessary subscriptions with rocket money today Go to rocketmoney.com slash locked on. Seriously, you can save hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on. Get rid of those useless subscriptions with Rocket Money right now. It's the best app I ever used. We're back right here with Eric Kicks on this fan episode of Locked On Spurs. And we're trying to uh, do an intervention here with Eric because he has a trading card problem. Did you get that? Yeah, you have a trading card problem, man. No, it's all right. I I, sh- I, I can't be talking. I can't be. I have a problem. I have my my problems too. I can't stop every time. Like there's like a like Hasbro announces a new figure, and I, I get all crazy about it. Like I have to get it, man. For those I of y'all who for those of y'all who weren't able to see, I was a uh, I was actually teasing Jeff on the camera with my Keldon Johnson <laughs> cards and some other card. <laughs> so that card to- again. Put, let me see that card one more time. Which one did you want to see? The orange. Let me see the orange one. Yeah. It's not. Oh, man. Look at that. Mint card. That's a nine. Do you, ever, you, ever, you ever pulled a, a 10 ready? I have. I do have a couple of 10s around here somewhere. I would have to go uh, dig them up. Well, who, who's a 10 of? Or what I is it of? I think it was a Lonnie of? Walker, actually. Uh, Lonnie like, Walker. Great. Yeah, Maybe a Laker people. fan. <laughs> maybe a laker fan will buy it off you all right well, yeah, laker to... fans, reach out to me <laughs> yeah well let's go ahead and talk about uh your silver and black we're gonna be discussing becky hammond now i know in the last episode of lockdown spurs we had a discussion about becky hammond but uh a lot of fans are seeing the success that she's having with the aces uh but you know it's just a, you know heads up we recording this before uh the the aces game so hopefully she won a title but if not you know they're still in the battle the point is Success in Las Vegas since Becky has come. Eric, are are fans seeing what she's doing with Las Vegas? Are they putting it in perspective? Or are they just kind of flipping tables and looking at the Spurs and looking at them like, hey, you guys effed up? You know what? I got I think I am gonna go the route where they uh well it's not go the route, it's what I what I sense from a lot of fans. They are just getting the perspective that they're like, you know. 
everything that in that question, that regard, that everything's going to be all right, simply because remember with Silva, uh, he he made that statement with Pop running a university down here, and you see all the success that the other coaches are having, including Becky Hammond. And, um, I, you know, I kind of just think that at the beginning, maybe Spurs fans were a little bit upset, you know, and that one got away. Maybe some got away because I think, you know, with like Ime and Monty, mm-hmm. that when they when their success started happening, you know, that question also came up. But now you see it happening in different areas and stuff like that. And I, I don't think the Spurs fans – are too much concerned or upset about that now, you know, as much as they were when, you know, this like coaching tree started branching out and all the seeing all the success that they started having. Um, but no, I don't think that they're very upset about that now. But yeah, well, you, you know, prop, props to Becky though. I mean, she went out there and she's doing it, you know, mm-hmm. she's doing her thing. And hey, uh, uh, I'm happy, you know, sitting back mm-hmm. and watching all the success that she's having. And, you know, you look at they they love posting those locker room uh, videos with her dancing or, you know, jumping up and down with their team. And, you know, they props always puts a big smile on my face. I, I know for me, I don't get upset and say like, hey, you know what? You see, that should be us. Like, no, I'm not going to go there. With that. You got to keep these in perspective, too. One, her team is loaded with talent. Yep. They had the number one draft pick, the uh, yep. rookie of the year. Um, you know, Plum is coming into her own, you know, and they brought in a bunch of other players that are really good. The Spurs don't have that number one overall pick like the right. Aces do. The mm-hmm. The Spurs don't have, you know, cornerstone pieces on the roster. I got to ask you, Eric, do you think, based on what you saw this season from her, how do you think she would translate into the NBA? Uh, I, I, well, number one, I don't think that she's going to go come to come to the NBA anytime soon, especially with the situation that she's found herself in, right? You know, in LA and the success that she's having, I know I wouldn't leave. Um, and I, I, I really don't see her unless like something drastic happens in the form of a big bag. But uh, I, I don't think she would have a problem transitioning into the NBA. I mean, she even did, didn't she uh, win like a, what was it, the Summer League? Uh, she mm-hmm. took the Spurs yeah. to the Summer League champ- yeah, championship like that. And, you know, I, I, I know you, maybe it was a question back in the day, but like right now, I don't think it would be a question. I think it would be an easy transition. And uh, she got along just well with the Spurs, you know, when she was here. So I don't even think that would be a problem at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think for her, you know, when I agree with you, she ain't going to leave Las Vegas anytime soon. If they win the title for sure, forget about it. You know, I don't think yeah, she's going to be, yeah, you're going to be making her way. And I like, like you said, unless it's a incredible offer that an NBA team is going to offer her or even collegially, if she goes steps up, you know, that route. But I, I yeah, I, I don't see her coming, but I, I think you put everything together, her internship, so to speak with the Spurs, then her hired position with the Spurs as assistant coach. And then, her at least one year as a head coach in the in the WNBA. I give her another two, maybe. And you better hope that NBA teams are knocking on her door. Yeah. You, you know what would would kind of like irk me a bit though is if all this in between, like some another another uh, female gets gets an opportunity in the NBA and Becky misses out on making that history. Oh, that would be kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. Our, 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 you know, since this is a fan episode and you're here to represent the fan base, what are the are the fans also on you on your like thinking like you like hey you know it is what it is you know good, hey way to go Becky or are their fans out there like look, screaming at the Spurs right now at the top of their lungs like you messed up badly. No, no, no. Yeah, like that's why when I yeah when I gave that 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 was that I that was I believe that that's how the fans. I that's what I get from the fans. You know, it's that at the beginning, you know, they were maybe like, oh, you messed this up and, you know, we let a good one get away. But it's just like you said, I mean, look at the look at the team that she went to. I mean, they were loaded right now. Yeah. That's not a knock on Becky Hammond by any means. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. We all know the, you know, her, her her coaching ability and stuff like that. But now um, I think that they're they've more calmed down now. 
like I said, when they just look throughout the NBA and they see the success, as long as you went to pop university, quote unquote, you should be all right. And I kind of think that that's the way they feel with, you know, with hey, who's going to take over pop, you know, when pop decides to retire, if he ever decides to retire, <laughs> but, uh, you know, what I mean? like, yeah, at the beginning, you know, they were kind of worried, but I think, you know, they, they, I think they understand it's, you know, whoever, whoever they decide to choose, I don't think that it's going to be a stranger. And I think that they're comfortable with that, you know, and hey, yeah. you know, yeah, that's the way. Hopefully by now, this episode of Locked on Spurs, Becky celebrating a championship with the WNBA. If not, well, at least they got one more game. But when we get back, we're going to continue our chat about your silver and black and go over some Spurs news and notes that you may have missed. We're back right here on this fan episode of Locked on Spurs with one Spurs fan who's making his fifth time here on Locked on Spurs. He is Eric Hicks. He's going to tell you how to follow him in just a few seconds. Eric, can I uh, bug you for a few minutes? Go ahead. For some Spurs news and notes to catch up the listeners. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. So in the last episode of Lockdown Spurs, Eric, we asked, well, we took a trip to the Spurs multiverse. We activated the gauntlet. The Tesseract was activated, everything. We asked, what if? What if Mono Ginobili never came to the Spurs? In other words, he just stayed as a draft and stash, and that was it. What are your thoughts? How does that change the Spurs' fortunes? Oh man! First off, I don't even want to think about a team <laughs> where Manu, <laughs> Spurs team where Manu doesn't exist. And that now, nah, you know, oh man, um, I don't think we get as many rings if uh, if mm-hmm. they would have drafted and stash Manu. Um, but uh, man, man, come on, man, that's a hard question for me because I you already know that Manu is my favorite player of all time. That's my favorite Spur. Yeah. Actually, yeah, you, know, so, you don't even want to think about it. I think about that right but uh no i just uh, i think that it, we wouldn't be where we are today definitely we wouldn't have the rings that we have but uh, uh yeah that's how i feel about that that would be, a, right. that would be a shame if they did draft and stash somebody like manu though you know it would be weirder if somebody else would have picking him up Ooh. yeah yeah and um that was a spurs mo back in the day uh, they had robinson early they was well, they had duncan so they, they were did doing it with a lot Luis of draft Scola, and stash. Didn't yeah, for a while, Luis Scola was a draft and stash. But technically, Manu was a draft and stash. They drafted yeah. him in 99. They stashed yeah. him until 2003. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of the younger Spurs fans don't realize that yeah, when Manu first got to the to join the Spurs, uh, he was yeah. here or he belonged to us. We just didn't, they yeah. just didn't call him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, uh, he was, by definition, a drafted stash. All right, another Spurs news. Uh, Kelton Johnson went back home to Virginia to host uh, his annual basketball camp. And if you go to uh, Spurs.com uh, right now, you could check out a full interview with him uh, talking about his NBA journey and more. Uh, they're starting the Spurs story series. So that's a little sign that the season is right around the corner. Go check it out, what it means for Kelton Johnson and um, his family and whatnot as they put on another fan, well, in this case, a summer camp for kids in his hometown. In other uh, Spurs news, uh, we, we got to bring this up because I think it bears repeating, though. The Alamo Dome now is pushing Spurs fans to buy tickets. This is not the Spurs. It's not lockdown Spurs. This is the the Alamo Dome staff are pushing the Spurs fans to go to pack the Dome to break the NBA record. Eric Hicks, are you going to be at the Dome for that retro game next season? You know what? I say no, but I know that I'm going to, you know, the Spurs fan in me, and pretty sure some family or friends are going to drag me out to there. Um, <laughs> You're going to go, just admit it. I'm going to go. Hey, but you know what? It is going to be a – I hope the Alamo Dome – people get ready because I've heard some horror stories about those events lately and I just hope they get ready because you know what Uh, Spurs fans you know they are getting super excited you know this is going to be a special night and Mm -hmm. you know I hope the Alamo Dome personnel know hey you got some guests coming over you know what I mean it's time it's time to clean behind the toilets baby yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of Spurs fans, for the most part, are going to be going to that go- dome game. They, the Spurs want to break the NBA record for a yeah. regular season home attendance. 
Um, so yeah, just wish, I, I, just wish in prices were a little bit better. I'll be yeah, honest with you. Yeah. That that should tell you what type of seasons ahead for everybody. That that is the the highlight of the year already. A one game, a retro game, trying to break an attendance record. So brace yourselves, Spurs fans. It could get ugly when the ball goes up in the air. And finally, kudos to New Spur, sort of, kind of, because he's just making a second stint. Uh, Gorgie Ding, he was named the World Cup Africa MVP. He led Team Senegal. Uh, to that uh, win in that tournament to qualify for Eurobasket. Uh, basically, you know how Eric, you know that works. So they're just a bunch of qualifiers during the summer. Yeah. And every every country has its own tournament. Well, Africa had one. And yeah, Gorgie Dang. Yeah, MVP. Way to go. Yeah. Uh, and- Gorgie, yeah. congratulations. All Absolutely. right. We're done talking. Yeah. We're yeah. done talking. We want to hear from you. Oh, you got something to say, Eric? No, 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 go ahead. I, I just wanted to touch a little bit when you were talking about this season coming up and whatever it is and that. And I was just oh, like, go ahead. Like, hey, Spurs fans, especially I'm speaking to your young, younger ones, all right? The ones who have not been through a rebuild, okay? I'm old enough to where I've been through two. I you you've been through a couple, right, Jeff? Oh, yeah. I've been, yeah. I've been through you went yeah, through the when two came to the NBA. Right. This, day, this, yeah. this, this, this year is gonna be kind of weird. All right. Don't freak out. All right, just go along with it. You'll understand at the end of the season. No worries. All right. Yeah. There you yeah. go. If Eric can survive rebuilds, if I can survive rebuilds, young kids, Spurs fans, you can too. This is your first one. This is your so, first one. So it's gonna we're we're gonna look a little children of the Cornish. Don't worry. Yeah. Everything is exactly. fine. Exactly. Hey, Eric, we're gonna put a wrap on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. Tell everybody how they can chat with you. Yeah, they want to. They can hit me up uh, on Twitter. It's uh, Eric Hicks Seven. Uh, if they have any questions, or if they want to talk cards, or um, you know, if they want to just share with me. I know I've been sharing this whole episode, uh, <laughs> my collection with you, or uh, you know, go in and hit me up right there. Um, I know you you your heavy basketball card, NBA cards, but what other cards do you have? Uh, I collect mostly. I uh, well, besides ba- basketball, is really hard to get a hold of these days. Basketball is very popular. Uh, if y'all catch like a blaster box out there or something like that, you know, go ahead and snag that up, man. So, you know, because they're hard to come by. I know I do. Whenever I see a basketball box or whatever, you know, I'll snag them up. Um, you know, you can get really what's a, lucky. What's a blaster box? Okay, so they the they have like uh, the blaster boxes. I wish I had. It's this. I'll post one after. They, they kind of look like this. All right. I, I don't know what's the best way to describe it. It's just like a small little box, right? It's thicker than a thicker than a your average, you know, collector's hobby pack or whatever this and that. But even if, like I said, the NBA cards are so popular these days, even if you see a pack, go ahead and snag it up. You know, you do see a whole bunch of baseball cards out there. You know, foot a lot of football cards, but NBA cards. You know, they're just hard to come by. You see them mostly more of like the college ones. And my teacher gets mad at me. He's like, you're always getting college. You're always getting college. And I was like, it's almost like that's the only thing that's available. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Eric, Eric definitely is a trading card guy. If you are into the uh, the hobby, make sure to hit him up. Subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast: Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes. Now on YouTube, there's a Lockdown Spurs YouTube page. You can also find this episode and a lot more on the Ken Spy Plus app. Go check it out right now. And we, like always, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Now go and make the NBA Top 50 on Lockdown NBA your second listen. Which player moves the betting line the most this season? Locked on and the Bet Online odds makers present the NBA Top 50 Most Valuable Players. Find it on Locked on NBA wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Eric, hopefully this intervention of your addiction to ripping cards helped. If not, I don't blame you because I'm probably going to go to GameStop after this episode of Locked on Spurs. So for Eric Hicks, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.